or um, Scott for Wessex Blades. In this video I'm going to show you what's in my preparedness kit from easily storeboard items that will be useful in situations such as this uh, Covid pandemic at the moment that's going down uh, and there's possible possibilities of a lockdown uh, but also any other uh, freak weather uh, occurrence that could happen so this box of equipment can be useful because you haven't actually got to go out to make use of the items that are in it. If you're a new viewer and have just come across my channel, I'm Scott from Wessex Blades and I've got 20 years in manufacturing, engineering and education and I use my experience here to share my knowledge and help you learn about areas such as knife making, the outdoors, but in this case is preparedness, uh, which could be anything from power cuts, floods, pandemics, extreme weather challenges. Uh, initially, I'd encourage you to understand food and water as your primary needs. Um, and I assume you're living in a house or a flat that was already provided your shelter. Um, so these items are basic store-bought goods that I have uh, just purchased on the way. Initially, I would encourage you to understand that your basic needs is food and water. Um, and I assume that you're living in a house or a flat that provides your shelter. Um, so these are store-bought items, nothing really specialised. And it's stuff that you can add to your kit around the house. Uh, and you can need, grab it whenever you need to. Um, I'd also encourage you to research and understand the rule of threes principle in regard to survival, um, where you can, in a moment, rationalise and prioritise what should be done and in what way should emergencies come up. Uh, an example would be the rule of threes, three seconds, three minutes, three hours and three days. Um, so if you would think about survival of a human being or your animals and pets and whatever, three seconds would be a, a toxic environment, so something like a poisonous gas or um, a extreme heat. Okay, there's only so much you can get, three lungfuls of really bad smoke, and it would cause someone to black out. And three minutes would be three minutes without a decent supply of air to your system or the oxygen in it, so carbon monoxide poisoning, um, lighter smoke, inhalation, uh, drowning, those sort of things. So that's three seconds, three minutes. Three days. Three days is the sort of time scale you're looking at that you'd be struggling to exist without water. Now that's more. You're sat doing nothing. And you'll last might last three days without water. That's not out and about playing survivalist, go running hunting or anything. You need far more than that, and you won't last anywhere near as long. But the three in your mind, the three minutes, three hours, three days. This this principle's kicking in, and then about three weeks without food. Um, so. There's a rule of threes in there, and if you understand that, you can start seeing how we're able to have a system in in position where you can have a priority. Well, we need clean air before we need clean water. So if you're in a situation that can, you know the, the fire going and there's smoke everywhere else, you're not too interested on a glass of water. Okay, there's a priority involved in it. Um, I would also encourage you to understand what an EDC is or an everyday carry. Um, it's basically a selection of items uh, that will be based on your person, either on your belt or in your pockets or in a little uh, belt pouch. So no matter where you are, you've always got that with you. That EDC is on you. And obviously there's local laws to understand with exactly what pen knife you might have or what torch you might have. And some, some places like America, you, you may consider you want um, a baton or something. Okay, but your EDC is on you all the time. Um, and then you start understanding that the the clothes that we wear are also part of a layered system. So stout footwear, a well-layered clothing system that offers versatility for the season you're in or the location you're in. And then tools such as torches and multi-tools, pry bars, pen knives, that will allow you to accomplish tasks where the unprepared will simply be unable to do that task. Whereas you've got something like, like a multi tool that's got a pair of pliers, you can open that uh, tap that's too stiff. Okay, you've got the tools to allow you to perform tasks that the average person unprepared can't accomplish. Um, so I'd recommend a minimum of a cutting combination tool, such as a multi tool or a Swiss Army knife, uh, a medium sized torch rather than just the smallest one, that's the backup that will go on your key, you know, your car keys. But you a decent torch with a um, a large capacity battery that will last you a decent amount of time, like over a weekend of use. 
um, and then some form of reliable ignition. That could be either a ferro rod or a cigarette lighter. And if you've got a cigarette lighter, you can put a piece of bicycle inner tube, slide it up, and you can slice off little slivers of that and set fire to it, and it lasts longer uh, than it would be if you're just literally trying to set fire to sticks. You set fire to the inner tube that's around the cigarette lighter. You, you've layered your system as much as you possibly can. Um, as I said, the preparedness kit, um, it goes along the whole prepping idea, which is a layered system. It's very personal, and it's based on your skills and your experience, where you are, the climate you're in, the zone you're in, okay, different needs will arise and that's how you build your system to suit what you need. Um, and the group you're preparing to prepare for, uh, be it a young family, it's just over yourself and your partner, or you've got a large extended family with many tiers of generations where you've got people you need to be more um, attentive to as they're pressing on in years, or it could be someone with more medical needs. And um, on all those factors go into the 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 churn out hurdy gurdy box of what you need to supply your group with. And as and as you gain experience, you can actually swap items out. You suddenly realise that because your skill level is slightly higher, you can move on to a slightly different piece of equipment. But the main thing I would say is is be honest with yourself. Uh, with your skill level and your experience that you don't trust um, take on items that someone else has done it but yet their skill level is far far beyond yours you need to be really honest with yourself and the things that are bomb proof for you those are the things that you need to put into your system that will work every single time and then of course within that system you don't want any glaring gaps like you've got a, a system but you haven't got any way whatsoever in transporting water or you haven't got any way whatsoever of purifying water or you haven't got a shelter element you haven't got a tarp or you haven't got a tent okay you, you need to have a broader base of equipment to make it as easy as possible for you to cover all bases as I go through this kit it's more of a blueprint um, and when I introduce each little uh, item I'll try and expand as much as I can as to why I've got that in there and um, possibly it's it's a very um, versatile piece of equipment um, it does a multitude of uses or it's the only thing that does it and that's why I've got it okay so as we go through I'm going to show you how I do it and why I'm doing what I'm doing um, and you can expand each item you you realize that that, that, that item there you've got a bigger need than I have so if I've got two of them you may need to have a bigger version of it and maybe two of those okay so it's entirely up to you but you need to be honest with you on what your needs of your group is going to be so when it all comes together the kit is as individual as you are so this is where the panic buying starts you know be very careful chucking any old thing down the toilets because you don't know whether or not it dissipates in the water like toilet roll does. Um, but SHTF really does come into the play when this stuff runs out and your family can't use what they used yesterday. Um, yeah, stock up is the best thing. So, hygiene products, uh, importance of which is obvious. So, we're looking at a pandemic at the moment, so... This stuff is in very short supply. You can be using soap quite ha quite happily with water supply as it is, or even with rainwater, but at least you can boil the rainwater. And it's not just you guys. There's other members of the family to think about as well. And the thing about the, the towels is, it's a very absorbent material. So if you had a really bad wound, at least you could have that to staunch the flow. So general purpose use. I make sure that on the... Uh, antibacterial hand gel I look on the back and what you're looking for is the flammable symbol because that means that there's a decent chance that that brand has so much spirit in it that you can use it as a fire lighter the soap dispenser is useful you can still use the plastic container and a pump dispenser for something afterwards uh, you could use one and then water down the other one so it's already pre-diluted and at least there's more discipline because you've got a soap dispenser in both toilets 
there's less likelihood that they want to walk downstairs because you haven't got one upstairs so progressing with cleanliness multi-surface wipes anti-back wipes i wouldn't be too worried about using this on my skin if i was having a wash um, but if you're down to the last few that's why baby wipes come into it afterwards because at least that's an opportunity for the rest of your members of the family you can use these to wash in should the water supply run dry um, it's just nice to freshen yourself up and there are actually quite resilient so if you run out of dishcloths you could use these cloths in bleach water to wipe surfaces down you could dry them on the line reuse them in the bleach water again so you could probably get two or three uses out of them uh, but they're far more gentle on the rest of your family but come on blokes man up yeah that'd be all right and then solely the purpose of anti-back wipe is literally for wiping surfaces down cleaning things off uh, killing bacteria so you know prep surfaces for cooking uh, your ablution areas uh, your washing areas just try and keep them as clean as you possibly can uh, if you're considering this is a pandemic at the moment uh, you could put a small amount of these in an airtight box and you can wipe your steering wheel, door handles off with it, doorknobs. Uh, just so there's less contact on something that hasn't got uh, a decent clean on it before you've got to it. Uh, you can actually take these with you if you have a small belt pouch that's got a Ziploc bag in it. Because the chances of everybody in the gents using the washing facilities... If they haven't used it, they touch the door handle and then you touch it. So you only got yourself to blame if you haven't covered all bases and you've got some way of uh, wiping things down when you're out and about. In the meantime, they're greater than ours. And oral hygiene. So get yourself a couple of packs of the cheap budget toothbrushes so everybody can start off afresh. New. Uh, if you're having a lockdown, you should get a new toothbrush. And what I do is I plumb for a sensitive brand of toothpaste just in case you get a mild toothache. You've got an opportunity just to keep it under check. Uh, so it's twofold. It's toothpaste and it's a sort of uh, mild uh, painkiller as well. General washing up liquid. Uh, always, you've got to be dishing dishwashers. You could be doing pans. You could be doing all sorts of surfaces. At least you can get them clean. And a soak in a diluted version of bleach in a bucket uh, will then purge the bacteria off of it. Uh, so you're not washing your hands in the bleach water, you're washing all the pots and pans in detergent. And then afterwards when that pot and pan is really clean, you just let them gently soak in a thin bleach uh, dilution in a bucket. Um, and then you know that your plates are absolutely sparkling clean. Uh, the beauty of having thin bleach as opposed to bleach that's got scented like a lemon or an apple or whatever it is. Uh, it's much more useful for your water purification afterwards. So cheap, thin, bog, bog standard brand, anything like that bleach. It's got more general uses than a scented one, which are generally speaking. They're thickened so you don't get as much value for the money. Push comes to shove, spray bleach has also got uses. And kitchen towels and just wipe it all off afterwards. Plenty of uses on kitchen towel. And the spray bleach is useful because you're, you're diluted. You only need one of the spray bottles. And you can use it afterwards. When it's run out, we're just recharging it with your own dilution of bleach. And the other one I always try and keep plenty amount in the house is a cheap brand shampoo. Um, just you, you can use it as a body gel as well it's not the greatest thing in the world but it pents it's just an option for the your blokes you can keep yourself clean the boys can man up and use this rubbish and the ladies can have the nice scented stuff because try and keep the family happy let them have the nice ones and the uh, boys we're going to rough it I love that, that'd be plenty good enough for us and just in case everything ramps up to the next level you got an option of doing large areas if you've got one of these pump charge spray bottles um, for doing large areas. That's just not a hope it gets to that sort of stage. But if you got it, you've got the option of using it. That's the whole thing about prepping.
few items to really concentrate on um, rather than do uh, first aid kits in general most houses have a first aid kit get the best one you possibly can but as your experience grows you really start adapting and adding things to it um, one thing in my family you need some form of hay fever or allergy relief so make sure you're stocked up that and it's within date uh, paracetamol but get a paracetamol, get a sort of like a slightly stronger version of it uh, so it goes through uh, maybe ibuprofen, but there's another form of aspirin in case the paracetamol doesn't really hit the mark. Um, and along with as big a um, first aid you possibly could um, get hold of, I found these strip wound closure strips very, very useful for uh, deep cuts, not necessarily horrendous wounds, uh, but they last long. That's the thing, like, rather than a plaster. But these steri strip wound closure strips are a great addition to any first aid kit. And these are the sort of first things that disappear. So if you're stocked up and you've got them now, uh, you haven't got to worry about having to try and find them in a, in a depleted superstore later on. So sort of medical gloves. Um, I use these all the time when I'm handling glues and solvents and things. So I've got plenty of these around the house. Um, you can pick them up at a hardware store usually for people who are using, again, solvents and that sort of thing. But if you're out and about, how can you carry these on you just in case you need to use it if you're out and about i've got a very small mini um, uh, multi-tool pouch uh, that i've adapted which i wear on my belt snuck underneath uh, where my torch and multi-tool are so it's just two gloves ready to go in a protective pack like that and just to keep them clean sort of dirt getting in uh, and they should last a fair couple of months in there without getting too damaged uh, it just gives you the option that you've got a pair of medical gloves on you when you're out and about. Okay, so that that's an option. If you haven't got one of these, I would encourage you to consider those very famous chocolate and white chocolate eggs have a canister inside. And there's two gloves in there. Okay. So there's an option for you. Uh, the other option is to have a, use a match safe. Um, you can get all of these on the internet. Uh, mine are full of matches, but there's no reason as why you can't unscrew that after using the matches. And um, for that one match safe that you've got, hasn't got matches in, and you put a permanent marker on it, and you could write gloves. And you've got an option if you've got a belt pouch, belt pouch or something like that. You've got a couple of these medic gloves ready to go if you're out and about and you need to use them there and then, and you haven't got them in your car. And the other thing is protective gloves, more gauntlets. That you would wear a medical glove underneath uh, just in case something uh, you don't want to get anywhere near uh, has to be moved or someone has to be helped up if they collapsed on the floor um, also used for chopping wood doing outdoor tasks or something like you know you're picking up hot pans off of a, a stove that you're using um, just having a decent pair of leather gloves gauntlets uh, gives you a range of options and if you get yourself a size that's slightly too large you can always put the medical glove underneath so you've got a barrier between outside and your skin as well and just another layer of protection if you've always got a pair of reading glasses on you I mean initially you'd be able to use do fine motor tasks and actually see what you're doing instead of making mistakes but uh, it stops things bouncing in your eyes it's not the most protective thing in the world but if you're wearing it you've got a decent option there um, and also plenty of bin liners but strong ones and uh, parcel tape I mean you could start wearing the, the bin liners and the parcel tape will allow you to do all sorts of things you could tape up windows so people can't see inside do general repairs with it or just something to have around the house just to give you more options Having a fire kit of some description will be invaluable if you have to have a outdoor cooking or things need burning uh, or candles at a later stage. Um, if you've got an option of being able to choose the colours, I always go for a red or an orange because they're easier to see if you drop them on the floor. Uh, matches in match safes are very good because it keeps them absolutely dry. And then you can obviously have a refillable one and this one's got a bit of a jet on it as well. So you can get into uh, chimeneas and things and, and get the fire going 
a lot easier than trying to f masturbate with a match. That's the option. And uh, with the jets, they're very useful and they give yourself a two inch range. So you're not near the fire itself. But candles, always useful in an emergency situation. Uh, if even to give a comforting glow at night. Uh, but as you see, even though this one's in a tin, I put it on a plate. So be careful where you put them. Um, I've got a tea light holder around here now. There he is. Um, even when I use them, I've got a ceramic mount there. So there's one I sometimes put on at night. Uh, just, just, yeah, it's a comforting thing. So, storable power, moving on to next. So we've got a car starter, but it is actually a source of power. So you've got 12 volts if you need it. Uh, make sure it's charged up. It has a light as well. Uh, the two center and back left are lanterns, but they're also power banks for mobile phones with a USB charge and a USB out as well. So that's the charging area going in, and that's a USB coming out to charge your phones. Um, or other sort of USB devices. I'm not very heavily based on AA batteries, but I've got a few hanging around, and they're the ones where you can sort of put the your finger across and see how much power you got left in. So. Where are your systems based on? You need backup of some description with it. Okay, this is a tarpaulin. Uh, so it's got, um, I've put some power cord on the corners. But something like this, you can either have a, a, an emergency shelter with it, or in case some bad weather comes along and puts a tree through the roof, at least you can maybe cover that up. Uh, it gives you all sorts of options. You can cover up windows with it. Um, make stores drier in the garden if you were trying to store uh, firewood or something, it just gives you options as a waterproof cover. So a, a decent tarpaulin with some description. Just a, a small selection of what I've got for a dragon fuel. Uh, this little cooker, uh, cooking for one or two people, no real much more duty to it than that. But if you've got a cooker of some description like those camping cookers with the WD-40 size can in the side, make sure you've got a pack of four spare. Uh, if you've got the color gas ones with the cans underneath and the, and the burner on top, make sure you've got a couple of spare of those burners. But just a reminder that whatever cooking system you've got, or maybe a Coleman lighter, you've got paraffin for it, or, or maybe lamps, like a hurricane lamp, you've got lamp oil for it. Uh, but make sure you've got enough to give you a decent amount of usage, not just what's in the tank itself. Uh, you also need some form of lighting, whether it be a lamp or on my... Uh, blessing is I'm an affiliate with Olight Torches, um, so I've got plenty of these X Review uh, lying around, and they're, they're rechargeable, or like this one, this is based on a AAA battery, two powers, low and a high. Uh, this one here is based on AA battery, so that's not a rechargeable, that's an AA battery, which is really easy to source a low and a high, very bright, and you go right up to sort of flagship models now, this like, uh, a warrior goes from a moonlight setting and just pulses right through turbo and and everybody be aware now it's going to strobe okay so it's got a, a sort of distress beacon as well if ever you were in trouble uh, so the higher models have that sort of thing and it just so happens this Friday uh, this one is on offer this is the uprated version of this one here this is a a warrior with a decent belt clip on it so you can wear it on your belt you can put that on a baseball cap that way so it's a head torch as well a very nice magnetic switch on the bottom so you can put it onto things like that and shine down like the bonnet of a car um, and this is on offer this week with a bundle it's 40% off I'll leave a link to Olight underneath uh, just in case anybody wants to take a plunge on that but I would recommend Olight is a very reputable uh, manufacturer of torches um, and being rechargeable you only got to use a USB off your laptop and as you're working away or you're watching Netflix or whatever you're doing this thing's getting a new lease of life as well so make sure you've got a range of torches and ways to keep them topped up with power and a very economical way of purifying water um, you know, water purification tablets there's 50 in there each one does one liter so they're based on the black plastic army nato osprey bottles really uh, a couple of words of advice about it each brand will have its own way of doing it so make sure you 
do read the instructions okay um, make sure you strain the water first so you've put it through as clean a cloth as you possibly can to remove any form of dirt or particulate matter because the bacteria lives around each little grain of crap that's in the water and the last thing you want to do is that this water tab here is trying to fight all that as well so strain all the muck out of the water you possibly can even do two stages with it so like through maybe a tea towel and then through a really clean t-shirt so you give this the best chance it can to tackle what's in the water um, and then if you're using like an off spray bottle afterwards um, don't do it over and over and over in the same bottle because you'll have a residual um, thing and you could end up giving yourself an upset stomach um, because this stuff will accumulate in the water bottle so make sure you wash the water bottle out with hot water every now and again uh, so this stuff doesn't build up just in case there's a residual amount of the tablet left behind after you've used it but they're ever so economical I think I paid £2 for this and that does 50 litres so that'll do your family for ages won't it really uh, again, a link to a site where you should be able to buy a few of these. Um, and uh, hopefully we never have to get to use them. So there's a pretty extensive um, wealth of opportunities there. with having a few items around the house that are economic to buy. They're available in most supermarkets. Uh, but it's just thinking about why you're going to use those items for the uses that you're going to use. Um, I'll go back over this now. This is just a very small pouch that would have a mini micro tool like a little mini uh, pair of pliers that you get in, in cheap budget shops but in here i've got two of those disposable medical gloves just in case you need to have mine about uh, it's very innocuous it's very discreet um, you can wear it on a belt you can put it in a pocket a breast pocket whatever um, rather than just put the gloves in because they, they'll get bashed and end up with holes in but when they're like that, they're, you know, it's got a decent amount of protection on it. Right, Scott Voice Explains, thanks for joining me. I hope this has been of value to you. If you've enjoyed it, please give me a like and possibly subscribe. Because uh, it really helps the channel. Um, I really hope that, that the situation in England doesn't get as bad as it has been. I think it's in Italy. Um, so everybody stay safe, stay clean. And as you've noticed, I haven't even gone on to food, stoves, knives, tools, clothing really. Uh, there's a wealth of stuff out there on prepping, um, survivalism, just having items around the house to make the difference between having it and not having it, and the skills in order to use it properly. Um, I would encourage you to check out a friend of mine called Darren. His name is Funky Prepper on YouTube. He's got a load of stuff out there as well. Um, and let's all, you know, use what we got around the house. Try not to panic by too much and stay healthy over this pandemic in England at the moment. Thanks, Scott Boyce of Blades out.